only have four have to leave, members. Have to, leave some, have to leave some drama for the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if we're, I don't think we'll have new members um, you know, for this application round necessarily. Okay. Can we, well, we can maybe talk about that. Yeah. I think that was like one of our first. Um, yeah. Um, and Nate, do I still need to read the um, the opening introduction yeah, yeah. about being remote? I think so. That would, yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and do that. Um, the time is now 7.01 and seeing as a quorum of committee members is in attendance, this public meeting is being called to order. Welcome everybody to the October 21st, 2024 public meeting of the Amherst Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by the state legislature on July 16th of 2022, and maybe again since then. This meeting is being conducted virtually using the Zoom platform. The meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as usual. And uh, we'll just do a quick roll call to make sure that everybody's sound is working and I'll just go around. Zoe, is your sound working and you're here? Hi, yes, hi. Great, and Suzanne? Hello. Hello, and Nat? Yes, I'm here. Great, and Nate? Yes. Great. Um, so everybody is present and working, and um, we have sort of a longish agenda, but um, quick, probably quick items as we go through. Um, so why don't we, and I guess we've got um, two attendees. It looks like Lev is here, and then Walker, who's a, the new staff person that um, we just learned about, which is great. Um, and so why don't we go ahead and get started, and um, Nate, I'll let you take us through the agenda. Yeah, so, you know, announcements, the first one is just committee vacancy. So right now there's only the four members, all four of you are necessary for a quorum. So I'm not sure there'll be an appointment soon. So I think, you know, when we talk about the next grant application round, we'll just have to make sure everyone's available <laughs> for the hearings and meetings. And the applications are Mary. due in April. It, it could get pushed back, but, it, you know, it's a later than it has been for a number of years. So, you know, that gives us, you know, a few months to set out a schedule um, but yeah, I don't, you know, if someone joins us mid mid cycle, they could, but I don't, I haven't heard anything. So I'm not too optimistic. And so there are seven available seats. Is that okay. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the town did put out like a call for volunteers. Right. He was featured, uh, but I'm not sure it generated many responses. I haven't, I haven't heard. But. I know well, the last Facebook blast, I think I did brought us Suzanne and Zoe, and I don't think I have any new Facebook friends since I did the last one, <laughs> but maybe <laughs> other people, <laughs> maybe I do. <laughs> um, but um, so yeah, I mean, you can, it's okay if you want to, you know, talk to people and refer them, you can refer yeah. people, you know, it's not, that's legitimate. Right, right. Okay. Um, well, we should all, I guess, just sort of be, you know, on the lookout for, for, yeah. potential members and um right now we have a homogenous group in so many ways of um having gone through fort river into the all the same schools <laughs> um as just one of them so um be great to bring on some other some other people and other voices um but wonderful to have everybody here who we have and thank you everyone in advance for all the hard work we have ahead of us um and then, um, Nate, you had just mentioned about chairing. I didn't even know that the chair was potentially up. I'm happy to stay as chair unless somebody else would like to be chair. No, I mean, usually just every year we just want to, you know, review that. And so it's not okay. necessarily, you know, doesn't have to change, but just to confirm. Yeah. Well, if anybody else has any interest, there's no ego here. So please I'd be, step I'd on be happy to make a motion to continue um, asking Becky to serve as chair. I second that. Suzanne, you want to step in, take over? <laughs> I'm good. I think you're doing okay. great. <laughs> okay. I support that fully. All right. Um, well, it looks like everybody, does that count as voting? I'll, I'm happy to do we it. We do a roll call just to. Okay. All right. Um, so um, motion is made. And Zoe, how do you vote? Uh, yes. Okay, Suzanne? Yeah. Nat? Yes. 
and I'll vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm just going in the order of you guys on my screen, which is why I keep starting with Zoe and going in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, great. Um, and what is next? Yeah, it's kind of just an update of the grants we have. So, you know, we have um, three grants actually active right now, the 21, which should be closed out this month. So, you know, we, we finished spending that out and all the activities um, uh, in July. <clears throat> the, the Hickory Ridge Trail took a little bit longer, but that's, you know, that's essentially done. We were awarded the 22-23 grant, you know, almost a year ago. That's the, the dual, you know, double kind of funding uh, the social services are up and running. Uh, Valley CDC is doing their microenterprise assistance, but the town projects are uh, pretty slow to to move. And so, I think I mentioned that in the email. But you know, we have a million million one in our two. It's like kind of three actually activities. Uh, one started, but the other two are not. And so, you know, I think we'll be behind our expenditure requirements at the end of the year. We'll have to ask the state for a waiver from that. Uh, and we're hoping that we can just get caught up over winter with uh, bidding and then have the project start next spring and then end next next construction season. So in the end, we will be, you know, three to five months behind, but not, you know, not as much as it seems like now. But, um, you know, we were doing work on Route 9 to further the MassWorks grant, you know, the one that's, you know, there's this, the section between Cumberlands and Colonial Village, and then we're going to continue that. And then on Southeast Street, across from Fort River School, the I call it the extension, uh, across from the old school, we're going to uh, do water and sewer line work and then new road and sidewalk. <clears throat> and we were, you know, there's a comprehensive permit, a 40B uh, affordable housing project happening at the school for 30, 29 units there. And we thought the project would be further along and we could coordinate construction, but that project will probably be <laughs> uh, two years out uh, until they're actually under construction. So we're just going to move forward with it. Um, it doesn't necessarily hurt the project. It's just, we're hoping to sequence it in some ways. But, and now the Fort River school too is considering, you know, changing the Southeast street in front of the school. Uh, there's some ideas about how to put roundabouts or even a whole new intersection or something. And so all that's kind of delayed some of those projects, but it just doesn't look good when we haven't spent money in a year. Will any of the new proposals make the current plans um no longer necessary or i no. mean will they they all would still go ahead at some point as yeah. planned yeah the block grant stuff will still move ahead i think we you know what they're looking at at fort river on the main southeast street you know where there's the light by cumberlands and then there's you know another light at the other end with main street and there's the two school entrances you know there was one proposal to have four roundabouts you know two big ones at the um, um, at the intersections and then two smaller ones at the school entrances. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess there's been some other discussions about having one and then changing something. And uh, it doesn't affect what we're doing, but um, you know, I think DPW has been busy working on that. So you know, that's been the priority and then not getting the plans ready for the block grant bidding. Uh, so. Okay. so another question on that, do I recall correctly? I looked through rather quickly the, um, the update for the, you know, the, the coming um, grant cycle. And I thought that there was a, um, like a bonus instead of 850,000, you could get up to 950,000 if you right. had spent 70% of the 22, 23 right. funds. Do you think, are we going to get close to that or? Oof, what's no, we'll be, we'll be maybe at like 30 or 40%. Oh. I actually don't know who will be at 70%. So unless the community, cause you know, this is a, a, you know, they gave us a two year implementation window. So unless the community had a project that was, you know, a large project that was ready to go and they could start it really early this year and get it mostly done. Um, you know, when we had our grant startup training, they were saying, you know, a lot of communities are not going to get to 50%. Right. And so the 70%, right. Is, it's a reward. I'm actually, I've, I'd be curious to know how many communities will actually get there. So unless like they had a project that was just, you know, totally ready and was going to spend a million dollars this construction season, it's unlikely, but um, I mean, there's still communities that have 20, 20 grants active. So they have 20 grant, 21, wow. 22, 23, and then we're supposed to be starting our 24. So um, 
you know, we're luckily we're caught up. It's just now our 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 current grant is a little slow. Yeah. yeah. Yes, construction takes time. Yeah, and it's the bidding. It's you know, it seems like it's everywhere. Time. What? Sorry. It just seems like it's everywhere. I know. I, mean, I know. Yeah, the state said, "Oh, well, towns should be caught up now," but I actually think that we're after this year we'll be caught up. I feel like we, you know, I think a lot of communities it's taken you know, since the pandemic, and then we had ARPA money and we had to spend that and communities had other, you know, federal money. It's just, there's been so many public infrastructure projects, at least in Amherst, that we haven't gotten around to, you know, spending all of it. I mean, we're still hoping to do stuff at um, recreation areas, you know, there's still some public, other public infrastructure improvements. So we already have like, you know, like a whole slate of projects for next, next construction season, um, which, you know, it's great. It's just, you know, Someone has to manage all those projects. I was going to say there are only so many people to <laughs> be getting it all done. Right. Yeah. Great. And then the 24 grant, if we just keep moving down the agenda that, you know, we were under award. Um, we're starting to get our contracts going. I was hoping to have some social services ready for November 1st. It'll probably be a little bit later. Um, so that was the one we applied for this past spring. So that's, you know, we're, Get, the contracts haven't been signed yet and you have to do a few administrative approvals, but that's essentially ready to start, uh, you know, the next month or so. Okay. And that'll be, you know, we have an 18 month window for that. And the, the big project there was the multi-use path on North Pleasant street. So we were funding, you know, from like Fisher street down to almost presidential apartments where, you know, continuing a multi-use path that the town had started, uh, I think two years ago. And so that'll be, I think that's the big project on that grant. Uh, some of the social services are receiving the 22, 23 grant. So they actually won't start until uh, 25, until July of 25. So, you know, the states, you know, instead of having overlapping activities, it was easier to have them go sequentially. So then there's no issues with like supplanting or having a double, you know, two grants at the same time. So um, there's a few activities. Is that late for them though? They're not, they haven't received their 22, 23 money yet? No, they have. So like, for instance, the survival center has a 22, 23 grant. And if they, you know, and then they're, you know, they have a 24 grant, which say if they need to, they could start earlier, but the cleanest way is to start at July, in July of 25, when the grant for the 22, 23 one expires. Okay. So the state doesn't want to have overlapping grants because of nice. accounting purposes. Um, okay. Because usually you'd have to show then an expansion of a program as opposed to a continuation. And it has to be a demonstrable increase to be an expansion. And so it's really, you know, how do you essentially, you know, like Center for New Americans, they can't like, you know, with, with a three month or six month overlap, you know, hire a new teacher and increase the size for six months and then somehow fund that, you know, for a year. So, um, but I think that grant will be, uh, you know, I think that'll get up and running pretty well. Um, we have some special conditions every year. We have some we have to get through. And so we're just working on those. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, and then there's a 25 application that's just starting. So that's kind of where we are now. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't see any issues. I think as long as we can get a timely expenditure waiver from our, for our 22, 23 grant, we can apply for 850. You know, the state has the ability to reduce our amount if we're underspent on our previous grants. So, uh, you know, I've already, you know, in our quarterly reports, I let them know that we are behind. So I, you know, they haven't responded yet, but they might have some questions. And would that impact this, the amount that we were able to give to social services also because that's a percentage, right? right. Yeah. yeah, it would affect everything. So, you know, if we can only apply for 600,000 then everything's essentially, you know, right. you know, Proportionally right. reduced, so twenty percent of six hundred would be our social service, you know, eighteen or whatever percent, or fifteen percent for admin, and then the rest for. Um, right, yeah. and do you have a sense of how? I mean, are, are waivers fairly readily given when there is good cause? Yeah, they yeah they used to be like <laughs> a few years ago. I just sent an email, and they're like, "Oh, sure, that sounds great," but I think um, they're getting a little stricter. I think you know, I think. I think we're region one, HUD region one, which is like New England and New York state. And we spend our money really well. So, you know, of the entitlement money and other money that gets administered through the state HUD uh, block grant money, uh, region one does a pretty good job 
with projects and spending it, but I think nationally there is a backlog. So, you know, whether it's in the Midwest or wherever, but then it just, you know, HUD doesn't like that there's a lot of outstanding money. And so, you know, they they are enforcing, you know, stricter controls across every region and, you know, grant program. So, you know, I think, you know, my my rationale would be that we're behind now, but if we can get, you know, the the project bid and construction started next year, we still can wrap it up by next October, which is really only a few months behind schedule. So even though we're, you know, on paper and our expenditures are quite behind now, we can play catch up uh, with the projects. And so, you know, I think it's a it's a good approach. You know, they might have some questions. Um, we've never been denied. We probably asked for five waivers in the last eight years, maybe. Sometimes they're for a small amount or, or, so for, you know, or for instance, if we haven't completed an environmental review, which every project needs, to go through a pretty extensive environmental review. If we're not done, we can ask for a waiver from that. So we've done that once, um, but I'm a little. This year will probably be our most underspent that I've, we've had in the last, you know, eight years. So I don't know. I'm a little, you know, disappointed that we haven't. You know, I was hoping that by the time we would apply, we could at least have a contractor selected. But I'm not sure we'll even be there. So it's like if we had, have could have at least gone through bidding this fall and then have someone selected and be like, oh yeah, you know, a contractor is ready you know, but I'm not sure we'll, we can get there in the next um, two or three months. So we have And to, when do you apply for the waiver and then find out? Yeah, so we apply for the waiver by the end of our, this calendar year. Even though the grant isn't due until April, they want uh, the expenditures to be based by the end of this calendar year, so. So we'll know hopefully early next year. Yeah, early January. We're getting the full amount or just a percentage of it. Yeah, I mean, so we've, you know, Amherst has done a good job. We're spent our 21s, you know, completely closed. So there's another, you know, like I said, some communities have a 20 grant active and a 21. So the fact that we have closed out our 21 is pretty good. Um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes I think we, we always say we can do stuff in house. So, you know, we have capable staff, but right, if they're busy doing everything else, they can't, you know, if they're managing six construction projects, they can't then be designing another one or two or three and, you know. Sure. Um, but I think, you know, so for this round, you know, for the next round we're going toward, you know, I'm hoping we, the town has a few projects and, you know, there'll be others, maybe the housing authority or other capital projects come forward. I do think it's hard, you know, we have to meet, you know, the national objective of serving low and moderate income households. And, you know, depending on if an organization is ready to apply, we can't, you know, we can't just magically have someone come up with a proposal, right? So, right, you know, if we need to have a five or six hundred thousand dollar capital project or split between two or three, you know, hopefully someone has something. Um, you know, the town has a few ideas, but I just don't know if they would be able to be spent in the time frame with a block grant, right? So that's kind of the kind of the issue. Um, but yeah, I mean, so if we want to talk about the twenty five application, you know, it's a whole. You know, I said the the changes, and so you know it's pretty similar to the years past. You know, they want a few public hearings during the you know year. Um, the one difference is our community development strategy is good for three years, so I think we're in year two of three, and so we actually don't need to update our strategy. We could, um, but you know, they still want a public hearing to receive you know comments on priorities for this next funding cycle. But we don't necessarily have to do a big extensive outreach like we did, you know, say two years ago or even a little bit last year. So we can kind of rely on some of the strat the strategy and some of the input we received in the last year or two, um, move that forward. Um, you know, we have to review our current activities, which we haven't done, uh, but the 22, 23 ones are up and running. So, you know, my thought would be, you know, we'd have a public hearing in mid-November that would serve both to review current activities and to get ideas. Uh, for priorities for the next funding cycle. And then we could, you know, have another meeting or two and issue the request for a proposal in mid to late December. And then that gives us, I was thinking until early February, and then that gives us, you know, a month to have meetings and hearings to review proposals, and then, you know, a few weeks to get the application ready for April. So I have, you know, specific mm -hmm. dates, but to me, I think that timeline works out pretty well. Um, uh, you know, we have to now have a 15 day public hearing notice. So before it was actually just like a week, it was just like a reasonable time frame, is what the language was. So we could do 
you know, I, I tried to do two weeks, but now it's actually 15 days, which isn't a problem, but you know, it just, you know, um, we don't usually do a legal ad or a public notice for block rent in the Gazette, but you know, we do try to get, you know, get it out in multimedia. And then I try to, you know, do the current and indie and maybe even the reminder, it's just a legal ad in the Gazette is very expensive. <laughs> um, you know, so to like run the legal ad that the block grant um, program has, it'd probably be like, you know, $2,000 to run a legal ad just once mm -hmm. with all the language we have to put in. And so it's just, yeah. it's not required actually to do a, a public notice, um, but in the newspaper. In the past. So even though we don't have to do the same kind of outreach we did before we, I mean, the outreach we did was pretty easy to do, wasn't it? I mean, in terms of yeah. like putting it in the COSA newsletter and putting yeah. it in the school newsletter. So I would still think we should do those kinds of outreach. Yeah, no, I, I think that, right. But at one point, I think two years ago, we did a community survey and we had done right. a survey online and we don't necessarily have to do that. But I do think, right, you know, I still do COSA in the schools. Um, I can do all the boards and committee chairs. Um, no, I would still do all that, right? But instead of say doing a, you know, like a survey or having, you know, multiple meetings, and I was thinking we'd have like a hearing and then some follow-up meetings. We could do two hearings in November and early December if we wanted, but, um, you know, like in terms of like doing, a, like I said, some other types of outreach. And then we have uh, Samantha, a new communications manager, and she's really good too. So she can help you know get that out a few different ways. Um, and so, yeah, so I mean, I don't know if there's any thoughts on that. If we, if there's any ideas in terms of what else we'd want to do. So would that outreach be done before we have a um, public hearing on the, you know, to review the current activities as well as on the uh, priorities? Yeah, so I mean, I was thinking November 18th, or around there could be the first hearing. And that gives us enough time to right, advertise it, get it up on the web page, um, you know, get you know, get some language together. And then if we have a whole schedule set up in terms of rough dates, and usually I put that on online on the web page, and then you know, we have that included as well, just so everyone kind of understands the sequence. Um yeah. So yeah. 11 and 18 would be a hearing on current activities. So we get reports from the current grantees yeah. and, and then, then also, also invite people to talk about priorities going forward. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what that gives us one, two, three. It's four weeks out, which gives us, you know, enough, plenty of time. Um, I don't know if that works for the committee. That's a good date for me. Yeah. Yeah, I can work with it. Yeah, I think that works. Great. And then after that, we um, would our next meeting be a meeting to go over the art, what the RFP would look like? Yeah, and so I have December 9th as a follow-up meeting and or December 13th. So like, you know, having an, it, we could just be one, it could be another hearing, it could just be a meeting, but right, having a meeting to, Right, look at the RFP, the strategy, and um, you know priorities. But if we think all that is good, then we just need one meeting. Um, I think we could do priorities and strategy in the RFP all in one yeah. meeting. Do you, what do you all think? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And you were saying December 9th, or what was the other one? Yeah, I mean, I had the 9th or uh, like the 13th, which is a Friday. So let's not do that. I, yeah, I can't do that. The 9th is fine for me. How's the 9th for everybody? That uh, yeah. Like, uh, December 9th. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, it's uh, not great. I have another meeting before that. Um, maybe a little bit tight. About the sixteenth. Uh, Does that work? Yeah, that's fine for me. I could do the sixteenth. I can do it too. All right. 
And so then my goal would be, if we meet on the 16th, to have the request for a proposal ready by that Friday. So I was I was targeting the 20th anyway, so that still works um, to issue it, right? So we would mm -hmm. have a hearing, have a meeting to discuss it, and then we could issue it and email it out to everyone on the 20th. I was thinking so, it would be great. Yep. Well, I was going to say, so you'll send us the current version to review and come into the twelve sixteen meeting with whatever yeah. changes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think we had a good, I think in the last year or two, even last year, I think we kept editing it. So I think we have a really good mm -hmm. uh, proposal and review criteria. You know, we narrowed the um the narrative and everything and that all followed state guidelines so you know the state doesn't mm -hmm. want to read 100 pages for each proposal so you know right. they really want you know if it's you know social services i think it's like three pages if it's capital it's four to five and then you know so i think we have a pretty good document there to work with um and i actually haven't seen any application guidance on that yet so but it'll probably be very you know i don't think much would change okay uh, I think tar oh, target areas for the public hearing we could do, you know, our current target areas, we have three, you know, it's like town center, East Amherst, and then I think it's like South Amherst around Pomeroy village intersection or on like Hickory Ridge and East Hadley road. We probably, we probably can't have more than three target areas. So if we, if we think we would change one, um, we can always do that, at, you know, after, once we get proposals, we kind of do like the chicken and egg thing, <laughs> but right. um, yeah, the, you know, and I guess I'll map out also what are eligible block groups The HUD just, um, I think just recently they, or they haven't yet, but they're, you know, they're doing their analysis on the 2020 census and they're going to release what are the eligible uh, block groups in terms of, you know, low mod population. And so then I'll map that. So, you know, I, I you know, Amherst, although we're majority low mod by overall population, you know, it's only a, a certain number of block groups are then income eligible. So we have to, the tricky part, right, is having target areas that align with income eligible populations and then getting projects in those target areas. So we'll plan to do then the RFP in target areas, understanding that target areas can change if necessary um, at that 12-16 meeting. Um, unless Nate, does that feel tight for you? Would you rather us meet on dis the dis December second or whatever the Monday before December ninth? Oh, well, I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah, because I can, you know, after the public hearing, I think on the hearing we can talk about um, current activities, you know, priorities. We can even talk about target areas and strategy, right? I think we can put all mm -hmm. that in the notice, and then depending on what we hear, you know, I can always edit documents and send them to you you know, well before December 16th. And, you know, as committee members individually, you can email me back, you know, okay. if you want to start editing the RFP ahead of the meeting. And I, you know, we could try to do something like that. So on the 16th, we're really prepared um, with comments and everything. And so I think that's fine. And then okay. the turnaround to the 20th isn't that bad. Okay, great. And then what, are we looking at, do you think, for the date for the first, for the RFPs to be due back to us? Yeah, I had February 10th, just, okay. you know, it's a generous time, but, you know, issuing them on the 20th isn't great. Uh, right. I think that's why the state changed the timeline uh, a few years ago, because people complain that it just kind of puts everything right in the holiday season. So, you know, it could be, so what I had suggest, I wrote to myself, February 10th are due, we could have two meetings on like February 24th or March 3rd around there to review them. A public hearing on March 17th, they're due on April 14th, but that just gives the committee in and us enough time to have meetings. So, you know, what we have done in um, the last year or two is, you know, you, the committee would generate questions individually on the proposals, send them to staff. We send those out to the applicants and then they respond before that first review meeting. And that helps clarify questions and move it along as well. Um, and then, you know, I don't know if we need two meetings necessarily, but anyways, I was just trying to set up a, a, a schedule that is comfortable. Um, you know, I know last year, I think at one point we talked about maybe having applicants make presentations, which we've stopped. 
Uh, I don't know if we'd want to do that again. I think sometimes the concern is if we have presentations, we should actually have it as part of our review criteria. And then I feel like sometimes presentations that we'd have in the past, people can be good presenters and sometimes it's not even as relevant to their proposal, but they just, you know, are good presenters. And so, you know, I, I kind of like our process now because it's really about what do they submit as their proposal and any follow-up questions and answers. And then we have our, you know, our review matrix. Um, but, you know, if they want, if you want presentations, I feel like we would want definitely two meetings because, you know, between presentations and questions, it could be, you know, eight minutes an application. And if we have, you know, 10 applications, it just, it becomes a, a longer meeting. What do people think about presentation versus how we've done it in the last couple of years where we generally, they present a little bit, but we ask questions that we have about their particular grant. And I think everybody has, everybody who applies comes to that public hearing and speaks and has the opportunity to, you know, say whatever they want and bring people if they want. Um, but it's mostly focused on the information we think we need having read through the grants. I, I don't think it's necessary to have an additional presentation because we can really ask whatever we want. And they can say, like you said, they can say whatever they want or present um, if they come to that public hearing. So yeah, it feels, kind of, feels kind of duplicative to have a presentation on top of the, um, you know, the written submission and um, but but I definitely like the opportunity to um, ask follow up questions because yeah. you know some uh, proposals are clearer than others and and you don't want to penalize someone if they you know haven't done it the best way the first time so yeah great yeah I, I would agree you know I like the opportunity of um, you know I I like having the ability to ask questions I think it gives me um, more um sense of you know of what 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 i'm looking for and what they're looking for so mm -hmm. I, I like our process as it is at this point yeah so you know, if we're due, if proposals were due on the 10th which okay. i mean it could be earlier but you know if we had a meeting on the 24th that is two weeks so my thought is we could i can get you the proposals mm -hmm. um and you could have about a week to read them and get questions and then the applicants yeah. have a week to respond or you know we can change that a little bit um, and then I had just March 3rd as a backup meeting date. Uh, you know, it all depends on, right, how many proposals there are and kind of what, you know, what the result, you know, what kind of the committee's feeling. Um, right. Because sometimes at that meeting, you know, if applicants are there and there's a little back and forth in discussion, sometimes it does become a longer evening. I just don't want to want to make sure we're all, you know, comfortable with the schedule. Um, I think. I'm I'm wondering about having um that having applications due maybe February third instead of the tenth just to give us a time an opportunity to really read them well get them the questions to you and the questions to the applicants and for them to get back to us and us time to sort of digest all of that and do our rubrics and all of that and then to meet on the twenty fourth. Yeah, that that still gives them over what six weeks. Yeah. Yeah, that's still. Yeah. Which, just so that we're not rushing in sure. two weeks to get their thoughts and the questions and all of that. So does the third or, right, we don't meet on the third, that's just the date. And then we would maybe get our questions to you by like the 12th or something? Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, if the third is a Monday, mm -hmm. yeah, we have Wednesday, February 12th. Yep. And that's still good. I mean, it could even be later. Um, so if we're not, if the 24th works as a meeting date, I mean, you could have questions to me by like Friday the 14th. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then that gives applicants still, you know, two weekends to, you know, I'd ask for responses back. You know, I could say by, by end of day on Saturday or end of day on the 21st. And that gives you the weekend to look at them. Mm -hmm if we think that's workable. Yeah, I think that's fine. What do people think? Does that feel like enough time? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I don't have kids in school anymore, but that is the um, school holiday, <laughs> I think 17 through 21. 
Oh, that's oh. that okay, that is right. Um Yeah, so he learned. Yeah, that's fine. Mine are old enough, they they don't, yeah. <laughs> right, and they'll have two weeks to get well, let's see. I just don't want to the people who were submitting the people at the programs or you know services who were submitting the questions to might be away that week or with their kids all week. So that's what I'm thinking of. Right. Um the yeah, I, mean, I think yeah, I, that still gives them a fair enough time. And you know, and if and then they can always attend if the 24th works and that's a meeting, I mean they still can attend and provide information, you know, if it need be you know, at that meeting. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I'm okay. doing a presentation. They're just available for questions. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. Um so the 224 is will be probably one of our longer meetings. So just note that in your calendars. And then do we want to have, have a second meeting just in case? And then you know, given our 15, the 15 day requirement for a public hearing, I was trying to look at somewhere in March, um, you know, the third. Because usually we do, we do the, sorry, I'm, I know I should just know this, but my memory just goes. So we have the public hearing where we hear from everybody. And then do we usually make our decisions on that, at that same meeting? We, well, no, we the do, hearing right? is supposed to, the hearing is supposed to be um, on the proposed activities. And so usually after right. that public meeting on the 24th, we would have our recommendations to the town manager. And then, you know, we, I'd correspond that to the town manager. And sometimes, you know, he wants to meet with staff or with chair. And then for the public hearing, it would just be, here's what the, you know, preliminary recommendations are, right. you know, just to see if there's any, will be any changes. So we would... But the oh, idea yeah. is that we're coming out of the 224 meeting having made our decisions. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. And then any changes to the strategy if it's necessary or target areas. So what date are we proposing for March then? I mean, it's, I know it seems so far away. Um, Calendars are booking up. Well, we also need to, we would need to decide because of the 15 day notice, right? So, right. Can, so you, like, yeah. can you post that you might, like there's possible, it's an overflow meeting only if needed at meeting. I mean, how do you post and then we just would cancel it if it, if we didn't need it after the 24th? Yeah, I mean, at this point, we don't, it wouldn't even be on the schedule, but if we, for instance, if the 24th, we couldn't finish, I would assume we could meet within a week to yeah. wrap it up. And then I think- And that would be a meeting, not a hearing, right? Because right. presumably we can get through everybody. And does a meeting need to have the same 15 day? It... No, it's just the hearing. Okay. Oh, okay. I was thinking like the week of the 17th would be the hearing. And then that gives okay. us- um, you give staff, you know, if you had it on like some date that gives one to, you know, three weeks to submit it. I'm surprised it's due on the 14th. That's that is the due date that they said, right? Um, it's a Monday. April 14th? On a Friday. Or my, my, did I? Let me just look on the. Yeah, April 14th, a Monday. Monday, yeah. April 14th. Yeah, that's what it's. Isn't. They want you to work all weekend. Yeah, well, I was just, you know, Walker started today. I was telling her that, you know, after hours, the state doesn't offer any IT support, which is really odd. So have it be due on a Monday is odd just because even if you're working on the weekend and something happens, you can't email or call anyone if there's a, you right. know, <laughs> a problem with the system. So usually the first few days or the, you know, three days before the application is due is really busy. And so yeah. um, it's kind of weird that they set it up that way. So then should we set our public hearing probably not for for the March, not for March 17th. Right. Um, it which could is be, Monday, but maybe the well the 18th. Yeah, 18th or 19th. 20th. I mean any, you know, any uh, you know, I'm not yeah. we could do Tuesday I can't do Wednesdays. Yeah. Tuesday or Thursdays that week, 18th or 20th would be okay, I think for me. Right. So we can do the hearing after you've already submitted it to the state? 
This is March. No, this is in March. Oh, this is the hearing to review to announce the draft to announce for the public comment. Yeah. Wait, so do uh, people are eight, the 18th or 20th good for people? I am not sure yet. You know, I would have to look at when the UMass okay. um, um, week is um, is off in March. Oh, right. That's. Is that UMass's break or that's the college break? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so maybe we should aim for the week before the week of the 10th. Although the week of the 17th is the UMass. OK. Break. Right. It's good to know. Which I only know because Blarney blowout will be the week before. And that's how I know that UMass is on vacation that week. <laughs> I stumbled on like the first Blarney blowout. I came in for work. I forget re for what reason. This is a number of years ago. And I saw someone like come out of Antonio's or somewhere around there. And it was like 11 in the morning and someone started throwing up on the sidewalk. <laughs> and I'm like, what is happening? I'm like, oh, didn't you hear about whatever? I'm like, I've never heard of this before. <laughs> that's when the bars were. That's when the bars would open early on that Saturday or whatever. Eleven is late. It's like nine. Yeah, exactly. Not, Eleven. They've been whatever out time seven a.m. <laughs> I just know because Monday morning in court is always insane. After <laughs> that's how I know. Um, so do we? So shall we say the tenth then instead for our? Every... For the hearing where we make our announcement? It's... Yeah, I guess we'd have to advertise it. The, the problem is we'd have to, the week of the 10th would work, not the 10th itself, because we would need, you know, those 15 days notice from the 24th. Oh, okay. It's so like Thursday the 13th. So, like, you can't put this all on the website right now. Like, these are all of our dates. That doesn't count as announcing 15 days. No, it's so like the public hearing notice for that hearing would say, you know, the committee's made these recommendations. We have to actually list the recommended activities in the hearing notice. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay. You know, if we meet on the Not 24th. just the fact of the meeting, but yeah. what's in it. Okay, understood. Um, well, I could do the 11th or the 13th Same. of March. The thirteenth would be better for me just to get the turnaround on the notice. Okay, how's that for Nat and Zoe? Yeah, uh, yeah. As long as it's okay. not, yeah, I can I can work around. Let okay, me, we take a look. The third, yes. Yeah, I mean, if we I need mean, to, perfect. you know, if you know, if say, you know, say the proposals are due on the third, but all of a sudden something needs to move, it's like we can check in in early February or late January. And if we need to, you know, set a meeting on the 24th, yeah. we need to meet a few days earlier and just shift things around. I'm, you know, that's yeah. me, you know, okay. we, this is just to help. This is helpful just to know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then we don't meet again, right? Before you then submit everything on the 14th. Right, not typically. Okay. Yeah, and so I, you know, I sent the proposed changes that the state put out, and I highlighted uh, some of the relevant sections. So I don't know if there's any questions at all about any of that, or if people had a chance to read it. I looked through it; it didn't look. Like it changed much from our perspective of what we're doing. No, I think like by America is definitely uh, interesting. So they, for our 24 grant, we have to, we had to send, we had it, you know, a line item budget for all the materials for North Pleasant Street. And then we have to identify every material or product that has to be under by America. So um Typically, like raw materials don't, some do, but like, you know, steel, certain metals, you know, in the crosswalks, we have uh, the rapid flashing beacon. So anything manufactured has to be uh, by America. And so we have, I think, like eight, eight items, nine items, or maybe more, like catch basins, um, certain things. And so Public Works is aware of it, but, you know, it does sometimes add cost. And so, you know, if you have to source it from, you know, a company that we say we don't use or is not, you know, you know, for instance, we like we get granite, which granite doesn't count, but right, we use a company in North New Hampshire, right? We like the granite from New Hampshire, but it's like, oh, if we have, if we like this product from a company in New Hampshire, but they don't really have it, and it's like, oh, well, the next one is in like Michigan, we have to source it from 
a company in Michigan, um, which isn't, you know, it doesn't seem like it's been a problem. We've done it for other grants, but it's new this year that they want us to certify it. Uh, we actually have to, I think, um, have receipts and documentation. So, but that uh, will just be part of the. We don't have to address that in the RFP, for example. That's no, just but, part of what. Yeah, it's just part of it. It's just interesting that it, you know, it's, uh, it's now part of the uh, you know project. So for, in the RFP, we might actually say it for the capital projects that there's a build America, buy America requirement, uh, just so, you know, I think some contractors are now getting aware of it, but just, yeah, I think, you know, you might have to factor in a percent for increased costs. Okay. And looking through right now, I don't, yeah, I didn't see any, nothing else was too different. All right, great. Does anybody have any other questions um, on agenda items? I see that Lev has her hand raised. And I think we're, if we have no more questions, we're at our public comments section portion of the evening. So can we do what we did last year, Nathan, and have her come in so we can see her? Oh, yeah, yeah. Lev, I think you'll be asked to um, rejoin as a panelist, and evidently your screen goes uh, dark for a few seconds while well, you accept that. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that for, for many months. And then finally someone said, oh, you know, when you bring someone in it, depending on what you hit, it takes a few seconds. And um, I was like, oh, I never, I, you know, right. I, I don't know that. A moment where you feel like you've been disconnected. Yeah, it's like, Lev, are you, I thought we were promoting. Um, or if not, then I'll just allow you to talk. Lev, you can unmute yourself. Oh, there she is. Oh, good, yeah. It's either Lev or an AI-generated picture of her. <laughs> okay, Lev, we can't hear, I can't hear Lev. No. Looks like talking is permitted. Well, now she's got two. Yeah, now she's a, a, an attendee twice. I know. I wonder if she's having technical difficulties. All right, both, both labs look like you can. Um... <laughs> Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Sorry, not sure what happened with uh, promoting this panelist. I had to rejoin. Um, first of all, just thank you so much to the committee for all your time and investment in this process. I appreciate it, especially as you're laying out this ambitious uh, slate of meetings coming up. Um, I just had a quick question. Um, you mentioned uh, earlier in your conversation a November public hearing when you would be discussing activities and priority areas, and I just missed what the date was that you were planning on for that. Yeah, that I was the November 18th one, right? Yeah. Okay, great. And then did you decide between the 9th and the 16th of December for the follow-up meeting? Uh, the 16th. Great. So there's November 18th, then December 16th, then the RFP gets released on the 20th of December. It's due on February 3rd. February 24th is your meeting to make a decision. And then March 13th is the public hearing about those decisions. Is that correct? Yep. So I think um, proposals are due on the 3rd, and we'd hope to have uh, questions back to applicants on the 14th from committee members and then have applicants have a week until the 21st to respond. And Wonderful. Then just, yeah. Great. And then that and February 24th, but just to clarify, I just want to make sure I love you know that the February 24th hearing is when um, we would, people could come and talk about their proposals and we also will make decisions on that same night. Oh, thank you. I did not uh, understand that. Okay, so that is the hearing 
not an internal meeting for you all. Uh, uh, the 24th is the, sorry, the meeting where the committee um, reviews proposals and makes the recommendations, but oftentimes, you know, the last year or two, we, you know, the applicants are there and they can help answer questions as well. So although not technically a formal hearing, you know, we do allow the applicants to answer questions at that time. Sorry, then, I go back and forth between meeting and hearing too much. Yeah, to, and, and then the apologize. official hearing to review proposals, you know, to allow the public to comment on the recommended activities, I should say, is the March 13th one. Wonderful. Thank you so much for re-explaining that. Appreciate it. That's all. Yeah, I guess we, I mean, we could call February 24th a public hearing too if we wanted. It's just, you know, if we do that, then it opens it up, say, to a public comment. And if we wanted a public meeting, then it's, you know, really at the discretion of the chair, you know, and we can do it um, really for each proposal as opposed to just accepting public comment. <laughs> Yeah, I'm inclined to do it the way we've done it before, I think, because it's sandwiched between two public hearings that it's fine to have it be a public meeting because it's there's so much to cover. Um, and there will have just been an opportunity for people to to comment more generally at the hearing in November. Yeah, and then we, you know, I will, let me just actually, um, we had in the past, and I'll just do it again, we have, you know, on our webpage set up a comment form too, uh, we had started using and you know, I don't know that we get a lot, but we can set that up again. So it can be linked mm -hmm. online. So when we send out our notice, we can also mention that. The state- Actually, I did see that in the in the written changes. I don't know whether it's a change or not, but it said to make sure that there's a place where the people know how to submit written comments. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know the state's really funny about that. In our public hearing notices, we say um, like public comments can be submitted at any time. And I guess that's not enough guidance. <laughs> um, and so- uh, I, they had some recommended language we put in our hearing notice, but, um, yeah, I mean, we have it online, we'll have a comment form and then, you know, we tell them that they can email or contact staff, you know, mm -hmm. before or after hearing. So we'll just, we have to just add that language to our uh, public hearing notices and we'll put it online, but, you know, we're always around to, you know, anyone who wants to call can, it's just funny that I guess some communities, I guess, just never would say that, um, on their hearing notices. And so then I'm like, well, isn't it a public hearing? The point is to receive public comment, but I guess maybe public isn't aware of that. So they want clearer language okay. encouraging that comment. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. I'm always surprised at, to be honest, sometimes, you know, um, I know a few communities, uh, you know, the other year, I guess they never did a request for a proposal. Um, I don't know how they selected activities, but I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay. And so they said, uh, the state was like, we like how Amherst does it. So I sent our mine around to a number of mini entitlement communities, but I never really asked what, <laughs> what they did. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so Lev, I'm assuming you're, since you're silent again, that your answers, we answered your questions, um, but you'll let us know. Yeah, thank you. Thank okay. you so much. I appreciate right. it. Thank you. Thanks for popping in. All right. Does anybody have any other um, topics or thoughts that were not reasonably anticipated within the last 48 hours? Nope. All right. Great. Nate, did we cover everything? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, and if something comes up, we can always, you know, on the 18th, I'll probably have it be a public hearing and a public meeting. So, you know, following the hearing, depending on how long it goes, we could have a public meeting portion of the evening where we discuss the comments, or if there's anything else we need to discuss, we can just have, you know, a few agenda items for that night. Um, and I think we're in pretty good shape. I will and do you officially invite the um, current grantees yeah, for, yeah, the, no for the for November 18th so they know that they should come in? Yeah, they'll get an email from me. Okay. And then, you know, ask them to have a brief you know, they can just use a quarterly report, but a brief update to the committee. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, I think, you know, the social services and Valley are, you know, moving along just fine. It's really the town projects that are delayed for the 22 grant. So, but it's good just to have an update, um, you know, at, at a mm -hmm. hearing. And why don't you maybe tell them, um, you know, like a three to four minute presentation just to give them guidelines on, you know, so they're not going, taking too much time to come up with a, um, 
a big right. presentation, not necessary. We just would be happy to, to talk to them and hear from them. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, and then we'll let more people know that this process is starting. So um, like I said, it'd be nice to have, you know, like I said, you know, the town, it's it's fine when the town submits projects, but, you know, it's I'm trying to think, you know, there's a few entities we usually ask and last year they were just weren't ready. So I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm guessing maybe the housing authority would have a project, but I know, you know, they had other funding that they needed to spend last year, and, um, but they do have a lot of properties in Amherst that are eligible. Yes. All right, great. Well, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Coming in just under an hour. Nice to see everyone. Nice. Um, and we'll see you again on the 18th. Thank Next you. Month. Great. Thanks, everyone. All right. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye.